Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here and today with what? With the topic of the base load and the peak load. So, you know, we should not have made a video on this, but uh, anyways, uh, uh, let's say we make it, right? So, base load is what? So, the load that would occur uh, almost for the entire period of time. That is what that is the base load. Now, this entire period of time, this may be uh, on the daily basis. This may be on yearly basis. This is on the basis of which you consider your load curve. So, base load, I would like the definition from the book is the unvarying load which occurs almost the whole duration. This is the unvarying load, the unvarying load that occurs for almost the entire duration, for almost entire duration. Now the duration depends on your load curve. You are considering a daily load curve. So the base load would be that load which is occurring for the whole day. You are considering an yearly load curve. The base load would be the load that is occurring for the whole year. Right? Yes. Now the next would be this is what the peak load. The various peak demands of load over and above the base load. The peak load so I can write this is the maximum load that is occurring at a particular instant of time. The definition would be that this is the maximum amount of load that is occurring at a particular instant of time. So this is not occurring for, for the whole time. This is occurring at a particular instant. So that is called as peak load. What has the book written? The various peak demands of load over and above the uh, base load so do I need to write the definition or I will write it so the 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 maximum load I would write it by myself the maximum load occurring for some interval of time or a particular interval of time right yes so now what do you have? Let's say for instance I specify now you will have an intermediate load also. So that load would be something in between the two. You could have an intermediate load so that would be greater than the base load and that would be less than the peak load. So intermediate load and I don't need to write anything about it I believe. So if I consider a load curve, if I consider a load curve so let's say let's say something like this as the book has shown so if this is my load curve this is let's say the time in hours this is the power in megawatts for instance and this is the daily load curve so this is the load pattern or the load variation that is occurring in the day so for instance this is 20 megawatts and this is 50 megawatts so have a look the minimum amount of load is 20 and this 20 is occurring for what for the entire period of time the minimum load that you have is 20 so which means that this 20 megawatt over here is your base load whereas this 50 megawatt this is occurring at one instant this is occurring at another instant this means that these peaks these maximum load are occurring at a particular instant of time for a specified interval of time this 50 megawatt over here is your peak load right yes method of meeting the load the best method of meeting a load is to interconnect different power plants. So basically we have an interconnected grid system. We have an interconnected grid system. Now what is that? Interconnected grid system. So this is an efficient way of meeting the load. In this what happens is that you have connected your entire supply. The supply of the whole country is interconnected with one another. The more efficient plant is used to supply the base load and that is the base load power station. Right? Yes. So, so the, the plant that is used to supply the base load is what? That is the base load power station. I will write over here. That is the base load power station. And this one has to be efficient. 
Why? Because it has to occur for more time, right? It has to it has to operate for more time. Its working capacity should be high. This should be more efficient. This is the base load power station should be more efficient, right? Yes. Similarly, the the one that is that is uh, the power station that would be used to supply that 50 megawatt that is the peak load is called the peak load power station this one is the peak load power station and this one is relatively less efficient why because this is occurring for just a little percent of the time so if you've got two power stations the more efficient one would be would be treated as a base load power station and the less efficient one would be treated as a peak load power station now mostly mostly we have either we have a steam power station or a hydro hydro power station so both of them can be used as 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 uh, base load and uh, peak load power stations both but you know that depends on the conditions as well right not only on the efficiency of the load it also depends on the conditions for instance we say if we are uh, operating the the hydro power station so the hydro would be operated when when the water is available the water is available at the maximum levels when when there is a water a rainfall season or you have got your summer season so in the summer season the water level is high so you are supplying the base load from the from the hydro power stations right yes and the peak load so the peak load you are you are supplying from the steam power station or thermal power station in the summer seasons now in the winter seasons the thing is opposite you've got the water level is low the water level is low so the base load cannot be specified the base load will stay throughout the year right so the base load that was in the summer is still present in the winter so the base load has now to be supplied from the steam power station or the thermal power station right and the peak load that would be supplied by the uh, by the hydro in winter then comes the availability of fuel the fuel prices also that they also play an important role so we'll study that when we are when we move on this was just to explain a little bit this thing right so the interconnected grid system says what that the entire generating units of the country they are all linked together right yes the interconnected grid system now why although although this involves extra cost interconnection involves extra cost but the benefits are far greater so uh, the cost to benefit ratio is less than one right yes so what are the benefits for instance number one is the exchange of peak loads exchange of peak loads now how will this happen if, you, if for instance you have a peak load at one station and the capacity of that station is not enough to meet that load so what do you do is you have another station interconnected whose load is less at that time and it has got a reserve capacity it can supply more load so you take the additional work from that yes yes what has the book written interconnected peak load of power station can be exchanged so the, you can use, you can uh, you know study it for yourself the second the book has written is that uh, use of older plants use of older plants number second use so how is this possible you know if you have got an older plant so you cannot uh, trust it very much you could say so for the use of base load so you cannot provide the base load with that whereas if you have a you have a peak load a sudden load increase or you know that the peak load is there so you can provide it with the use of an old, older plant with a less efficient plant why because this is just a, you could say or acute emergencies as well that would just be for a shorter duration and you can just supply the peak load with that whereas this older plant might not be uh, adequate or efficient enough to work properly alone or to supply the base load so you can take it out for the for the shorter period of time for, for the peak load right yes the next is this is ensures economical operation so number third is the economical operation 
Now, how is this? So, let's see what the book says. Let's see what the book says is the intercurrent system makes the operation of correction positive economical. It is because the sharing of load is arranged in such a way that more efficient stations work continuously throughout the year. So, the economical is what? You have the more efficient stations, you provide them the base load. Do you make them the base load station? So, they work continuously with a higher load factor. So, with the higher load factor and the less uh, and the less efficient plants, uh, you, you provide it with the peak loads for a certain peak hours only. Right? Yes. Number four, it increases the diversity factor. Increases diversity factor. So let's see how this does do it. The maximum demand on the system is much reduced. This was the summation of the maximum demand of individual to the maximum demand of the system. So now the summation of the maximum demand would be much reduced. Why? Because your system now has a very large number of uh, a very large number of generating stations. So the maximum demand on each still you sum them. So the maximum demand of the entire system would now be comparatively very less as compared to an individual one system. Right? Yes. Reduces the plant reserve capacity. Number five. Number five is it reduces plant. So I missed a C over here reserve capacity now how is this so we'll see it from the book we'll read it from the book every power station is required to have a standby unit for emergencies however when several power stations are connected the reserve capacity is much reduced why because you have several number of units connected so you do, you do not need a reserve capacity with each and every and each and every individual plant why because you can rely on another plant if not on the second you can have on the third or not on the third you have on the fourth so all the systems are connected together so we mean the efficiency efficiency of the system has been increased this increases the stability of supply number sixth increases stability of supply now how is this for instance you have a shutdown on one feeder Let's see, we, we see from the book. Intercurrent is increase the ability to supply. If a major breakdown occurs in one station, continuity of supply can be maintained by other healthy stations. Right? Yes. So this is the continuity of supply. Why? Because they are all interconnected. So for instance, one station is down due to any reason break down any reason so you can supply its load through any other feeder uh, through any other station that is free at that time that has that has the capability to take the load right yes let us have an example from the book one or two examples let's say 3.20 is number one for instance example a base load station having a capacity of 18 megawatts 18 megawatts is the installed capacity pt right pt we, we denoted it uh, pt or p what installed capacity let's say pt is the installed capacity uh, this is 18 megawatts so 18 into 10 to the power 3 kilowatt for what for the base load station and a standby station having a capacity of 20 megawatts and you have a 20 megawatts another station that is 20 into 10 to the power 3 kilowatts and this is for the standby station and they are sharing the common load find the annual load factors and the plant capacity factors the annual load factor FLD and the plant capacity factor FC. So these are the two things that are unknown and the following data is given. Annual standby station output. So you have got the energy units for this one. Uh, for this one is 7.35 into 10 to the power 6 kilowatt hours. And for the base load station it is 101.35. 
101.35 into 10 to the power 6 kilowatt hours. Peak load on the standby station is the maximum demand. Peak load on this is 12 megawatts. I will consider it in kilowatts range. Hours of use are this much. Hours of use for the standby station are 2190 in a year. Okay, right. So the installed capacity, the installed capacity you have calculated PT, PT. Now the load factor is what? FLD. FLD is, is, is the energy generated divided by the maximum demand into the time. So the annual load factor. So let's say first I am doing for this one, for the standby station. So for the standby station, what would be the load factor FLD? The energy units are 7.35 into 10 to the power 6. The maximum demand on this is 12 into 10 to the power 3. And the time I would consider, oh, this is over the year. So 8760. So the load factor would come out to be what? Mm, it's 28%. 28% right 28% then what do you have is the capacity factor so the capacity factor is what FC this is again the energy units divided by the installed capacity I believe PC I, oh, we, we wrote for the installed capacity what did we wrote for the installed capacity PC right uh, or whatever it is I just don't know it right now. Installed capacity is PC, yes. Installed capacity is PC of the plant. So anyways, it's PT or PC, whatever it is. So PC into the time. So this is the plant capacity factor, right? Yes, it is. So what do you have is the energy units are given that is 7.35 into 10 to the power 6 divided by the installed capacity for this is 20 into 10 to the power 3 and multiplied by 8760. So this is equal to what? Capacity factor is equal to what? Uh, okay. 4.5. 2% or 42% whatever it is just check the calculations in the book it's not proper I have a misprint now let me tell you one thing the load factor the load factor is calculated on the yearly basis the load factor is calculated on the yearly basis where you have to include the overall time of the year overall time of the year okay for load factor you have got FLD for this you will have to take the hours of the whole year the hours of use you will not take the hours of use you take in the plant use factor okay so the book has got a mistake i believe over here that they have uh, for the load factor they have calculated with the working hours so this is not the working hours uh, is not for the load factor that is for the use factor right yes similarly you have it for the base load station now so the next i would do for the base load station fld is e divided by pm into t so i told you when these uh, when the demand factor is not given take the connected load or the installed capacity as the maximum demand so i would i would take this 101.35 into 10 to the power 6 divided by what 18 into 10 to the power 3 into 8760. What does this come out to be? 64.2%. 64.2%. And the, 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 what? the other is what? The plant capacity factor. So the plant capacity factor would be what? What has the book written? I don't know let it go e is what it would be the same it would be the same as this have a look for the formulas 64.2 percent why because we have taken pc equal to pm why because the the other thing was not given what is that thing 
Anyways, let's say one more example. One more example is example 3.21 one more example what does it state the load duration curve of a typical heavy load being served by a combined hydro steam may be approximated by a straight line 60,000 and 20,000 the load curve is given like this this is the time this is power in kilowatts this is 60,000 kilowatts this is 20 thousand kilowatts this is a straight line this is your what your annual load curve that the maximum demand is 60,000 the minimum is 20,000 so I would write maximum demand is 60,000 kilowatts right next what do you have the hydropower available at the time of minimum regulated flow is sufficient to take this much units per day it is observed that will be economical to pump water from this and that determine the maximum capacity of each type of plant assuming the capacity of this and that let it go you can read it from the from the book by yourself let me summarize it for you is that this is the maximum load this is the minimum load you would have two stations the first one is let's say a station that is the base load station b station that is the peak load station whatever it is the book has written a would be the base load station b would be the peak load station whatever the book has written steam and hard or and this and that you need to calculate the energy unit supplied by by both I believe no or the capacity of both so you need the capacity of both the stations you need the capacity of both the stations so let's say for instance for instance this is Y and this is X for instance this is x and this is y and this is over a year or over a day or what so i don't believe they have mentioned it this is over a day this is a daily low of curve which means this over here is 24 right so now what can you do is if this y to 60000 this would be your what this would be your 60000 minus y would be installed capacity of the of the what of the peak load station right yes no wait wait this is not why okay this point is not why this is why this this vertical vertical distance is why which will show you what the the this y will show you the capacity of the peak load station right so how do you calculate it let's say from the similarities of triangles so one triangle is for instance this one as the other triangle is for instance this one so what do you have what do you have is uh, y upon yes so so what do you have is from the similarities of the two triangles you know theorems from your from your basic mathematics so this side divided by this side so x divided by what by 24 and similarly you have a y over here so this y and divide by this particular side so this is 60 minus 20 is 40,000 so from here you take either x or you take y what has the book taken so y is equal to so they've taken the value of y which is equal to 40,000 x upon 24 right yes now they have put the value I would put it back in this one you put it back in this one whatever you do is you put it back in this one find the value of X you put the value of Y over here and you find the value of X a quadratic equation would come solving that I'm not going to solve it the value of X comes out to be 12 now what is basically this X so these are the number of hours these are the number of hours for which the base load the peak load power station will operate in parallel with this one so these are the hours for which 
स्टेशन बी ऑपरेट्स वेयर ऑपरेट्स इन पैरल विथ ए राइट यस सो यूव गॉट एक्स नाउ यू विल कैलकुलेट वाई वाई इज वॉट वाई इज द इंस्टॉल कैपेसिटी ऑफ स्टेशन बी सो द इंस्टॉल कैपेसिटी ऑफ स्टेशन बी वाई यू पुट द वैल्यू ऑफ एक्स ओवर देयर सो दिस कम्स आउट टू बी ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड किलो वाट्स दिस कम्स आउट टू बी ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड किलो वाट्स सो इफ दिस इज ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड किलो वाट्स सो सिक्सटी माइनस ट्वेंटी यू हैव दिस टू बी 40000 kilowatts right yes what else remains the the installed capacity of the station a remains installed capacity of station a remains right so what would that be that would be 60000 minus y 60000 minus y so that comes out to be 40000 kilowatts the installed capacities are usually dealt in megawatts okay yes so now you've got the installed capacity of both can you you've got the time of operation for both can you not uh, uh, calculate the energy units from them you can so so this let be your homework the energy units of a energy unit generated by b over the day are unknown similarly you can find the load factors and capacity factors and things and other things like that right yes so i believe that i will finish this video over here i have another example in the book 3.22 let that be your homework let that be your homework because the video is getting longer and then it gets boring so i hope this is fine base load peak load intermediate load see you in the next video till then take care goodbye